I'm not able to sleep sometimes seeing news before I sleep. It, I have nightmares of it. So that's the only thing that bothers me at the current moment. Mm. So wait, your, your father was abusive. Yeah, I think it's the way, it's just the way he's brought up. I'm this teenager that hasn't got old because I haven't enjoyed my time as a teenager. Is there fake people on the show? Honestly, when the camera's on, people become extra. And this is a question, everyone, you see it all the time. Or no. Because obviously, I think a lot of these questions, I mean, I hope your wife doesn't watch this podcast. Like, you know, I'm trying to, I'm really She's putting- the first one that's going to watch it. So- I'm sorry to Ibrahim's wife. And anything that makes her upset makes me upset. So- Are you gay? All right, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode on The Vibe Show. So today we have a very special guest with us. He goes by the name of Ibrahim. And look at you. Getting a coffee to start the podcast? It's actually matcha. It's a matcha. <laughs> so guys, Ibrahim needs no introduction. This is my special... Oh my goodness. You know they hear that, right? It's like... That was a whole idea. So guys, if you guys don't know Ibrahim already, he is very famous. He's recently been on the show Dubai Bling. It's a Netflix show. Today you're on my podcast. Thank you so much for coming. Round of applause, guys. Actually, you came to me, so... Thank you for coming. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, why, why do you, why do you, Ibrahim, you're full of yourself. Uh, confident. Confident. Yeah. I think confidence is important. I'm kidding, guys. By the way, me and Ibrahim have been friends for quite a yeah. while, guys. Just joking. Uh, but you are definitely quite. No, but you are right, though. I am, I am full of myself. I you mean, not like full of myself in a bad way, but you have to understand, like, it's very important for you to be confident because when you're confident, that's the only time you can win. Huh. Is that what you say? Absolutely. If you're not if you don't if you're not confident in yourself, how do you think other people see you? And I mean, if your confidence comes after be as cockiness, then oh well. It is what it is, as long as you're happy. Doesn't that annoy you? Because I feel like a lot of people think Honestly it does. I think a lot of people do misunderstand me. Yeah. You know? Um, they look at my social media and they're like, Oh, this guy's full of himself, he's um, you know, he has an ego or he's arrogant, but when they actually do get to know me, they know that me, my confidence is only in public's eye, but when they really get to know me, they get to know actually the real Ibrahim. So, and then they get so happy about it. So I wanna, I wanna go into that. Obviously, we all know Ibrahim. We know the Dubai bling star, the flashy guy, but who is Ibrahim? You know, how was your upbringing? Uh, just tell us about your life. Ibrahim is um, the youngest sibling. Uh, I have five brothers and three sisters. Uh, I come from a mixed family. So Wait, you have so eight of you total? We're eight, yeah. Or nine with you? Well, with me, eight. So, eight Yeah, siblings. five boys, three girls. So I come from a mixed background. Yeah. So my father's from Kuwait, mom's American. Yeah. Um, what a lot of people don't understand, or people who do understand, is being from a mixed background, you kind of didn't get acceptance from each side. So my dad's family weren't so welcoming to my mom, and my uh, mom's family wasn't too welcoming to my dad. Yeah, because uh, I mean, I'm assuming the American side are racist. Obviously. Like, I remember going into my, my aunt's house and like my cousin making fun of us saying that, oh, because uh, she was in the army and she was like, oh, we, we, we drop bombs on your people. And, you know, you don't say those type of things. You know, it's hurtful. And that's your family. That's my family, you Damn. know. Um, so we had, we had that. But that's okay because, see, anything in life that's negative, you can turn into a positive. So we took that and we said, you know what? We're not gonna let it get to us. We're gonna be better people. We're not gonna be as bad as they are. We're gonna be as good as we are. But saying as bad as they are, it does not already like put a stereotype in your head growing up. Like, yeah, I mean, life is a. I, I see life as a fine balance. Yeah. You need to meet bad people so you can appreciate good people. Wow. Now getting on your upbringing, you were brought up in America. Yep. Where were you born? America. So well? I was born in Kuwait. Um, I left two week. I left two when I was two years old. Okay. And then you were brought up in America? My whole life in America, and I came to Dubai in 2010. Okay, and then how old were you when you came to Dubai? I was 22. 22, oh, so you came when you were like older. Yeah, yeah. How old are you now? 36. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, really? Yeah, I'm born in 1988. No, I genuinely, I thought you were like 27. Yeah, everyone thinks that. That's crazy. See, that's the confidence. And the looks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, so that's crazy to know. Yeah. Now, since you moved to Dubai, um, you opened obviously tons of businesses, you made tons of money. And I, I was gonna leave this for later in the podcast, but like you're a Dubai bling. People know you as like, you know, that. I mean, everyone in Dubai bling is known as those rich guys, uh, but you weren't born rich. No, actually like my father comes from a um, middle-class family. 
Yeah. Um, but when we went to America, he opened a business, so he made good money. Yeah. Um, but when my my mom got divorced from my dad, we started from zero. So my mom she didn't want anything to do with the house or the the businesses or anything. So she absolutely left everything behind and she moved into a studio with my with me and my little sister. Is this when you're in America? Yeah, I was 14 years old. My sister was seven. We literally we had no furniture. Uh, yeah. It was literally a studio. We shared we shared that studio. And I remember waking up on the first day of sleeping in in that place, you know, leaving your villa, and obviously having a big, you know, difference of lifestyle, you know, because we never experienced that before. And I looked at my mom and I saw her happy, and I was like, "Damn!" I'm like, "Why are you happy? We have nothing." Yeah. She said, "No, I have everything." I said, "Why?" She's like, "I have myself." And then I thought about it, and I realized that self peace is more important than anything in the world. Is for you to be at peace with your heart. Yeah. It's priceless. You can have all the money in the world and you can be miserable, but when you're at peace. So what happened was I had too much clothes and she was like, you know, Ibrahim, um, in day of judgment in Islam, uh, if you didn't use those clothes for a year, it's going to be on your back. Yeah. So I'm like, she just wants, she's just saying this to get me to get rid of it. So I said, I remember having a Levi's pair of jeans, a, a, a Levi's jeans, and I just bought it from Marshalls and Ross, which is like an off season clothing shop in America. Yeah. And I took it and I sold it online on eBay. I sold those jeans for twenty dollars. Why? Why did she want you to get rid of your clothes? She was like, you know, you're not wearing them. Like, there's so much, you have so much. Like, yeah. so I said, okay. So she basically wants me to minimize my. And this was after she split up from your dad. Yes. So, and there was no space in the in the studio because there were three of us in one studio. Now you said you and your sister. Mm-hmm. What happened to the other six? So they all stayed with my dad. But is it all from your mom or was so it? So my mom had two daughters from before, from a previous marriage, but they were already older and already got re- and got married. But my three bro- my four brothers stayed with my dad. And the other brothers, were they from your mom or? From my mom, yeah. Oh, okay. So they just decided we're going they with the dad. They stayed with my dad, yeah, because my dad had everything. So your dad, your original dad was rich. Um, yeah, he has everything and he, and they wanted that villa. They didn't want to leave. They didn't want to have any life, life uh, style changes. And I took that decision because I didn't want mom to go alone. And since then, have you ever spoke with your dad again? Yeah, I'm very close to my dad. I love my dad. Oh, okay. So huh. yeah, so he still visited him and we still like, I, it, I have so much respect for my dad. But the reason I don't put him on social media is he doesn't like to be on social media. But your mom still does, doesn't connect with him at all? No, my mom is remarried, my dad's remarried. And we see each other whenever we have family events, we all come together because my dad always like teaches us unity. Yeah. And even though like if there's a divorce in a family, doesn't mean that you have to be enemies. Okay, that's an interesting take. Cause I feel like a lot of people, I mean, it's, it's a thing where it's like, there's two different types of people. Some people just, you know, after a divorce, it's just like, that's it. Yes, but it's hard when you have kids together, you have to kind of like make it happen for the kids. So whenever they, they come together, they, they put their differences aside because they're there for us. Yeah. Now you, you mentioned coming, being, being brought up as a Muslim. Um, both your parents are Muslim? Both. My mom is a revert, so she became Muslim when she was 18. Yeah. And obviously, I think you always kind of, you're always online showing everything you do. You know, if you, do you pray? Yes, alhamdulillah. Okay. And obviously recently with the whole Palestine thing, obviously right now we can see you even have a Palestine cup. And on my phone too. <laughs> it's on your phone. The, like, um, you showed your support. Um, but you know, it's been a while since this, this thing's happening. Are you still, um, and I think it's a conversation I always have with everyone. Is it something I'm still that very you, much vocal. Yeah. Um, but I don't make as many posts because as main posts, I usually put more in stories. Why? Whatever, I, and I know this whatever, doesn't make any I mean, whatever, whatever I posted already has already, I, I, met, I made myself clear about yeah. it. And it, I cannot post the same thing again. You know what I mean? And people think, oh, well, are you afraid to get shadow banned? I'm like, I'm already shadow banned. You know, you I'm already, so? yeah, yeah. I've already had this uh, huge um, loss of, uh, of uh, views and stuff. But it's okay, you know, because the way I look at things is that, when I die and I go to God and God asks me, I gave it to, God tells me I've given you a platform yeah. and I use my platform just for my regular daily things and I didn't care about what's happening around the world, yeah. that I think I will have an issue. Um, obviously, let's, let's move on because I feel like I don't always want to talk about like obviously um, things that make everyone feel sad. Moving on, let's talk about your personal life. Okay. Okay. You want to start the Bay Bling first, then go there? No. Okay. No, I want to talk about your personal life. Okay. Um, you've been married three times. Correct. Why? So the first time I got married, I was 17. Yeah. Um, and my dad literally found out that I had a girlfriend. You got married when you were 17? 17. 17. Yeah. Is that even legal? 
It is with the apparent um, <laughs> consent. <laughs> Seventeen. Okay. Um, so basically, my fa- my father found out that I was basically like I had a girlfriend, and he put me on a spot, and he's like, you know. I have daughters, so he has my sister, and yeah. I would not accept my daughter for some man to be walking around with my daughter, so I don't accept it for someone else's daughter. So either you marry her or you leave her. And I was like, no, but why? I'm too young, whatever. He's like, no, this is the right way. This is our religion. This is what we have to do. So I said, okay. Yeah. I married. And that's something. And the second marriage, oh, why did you divorce her? So basically, I was a kid. I was a child. Um, I didn't, I thought that I only knew what a husband was based on what I saw my dad do. Yeah. I didn't know what it, I said, you know, if, when the man gets mad, like, oh, you don't listen to me, I divorce you, you know? Like we say in Arabic, like we divorce you three times, you know? And uh, my wife, she, she had an issue where she wasn't, I don't know, taking care of the house or whatever, and she wanted to go to her friend's house. Yeah. And I said, you know what, if you, if you don't take care of this, you're not gonna, because we, we did, I did things and she did things. So I was responsible for some things in the house and she was responsible. So when did you divorce? How old were you? So I was divorced, I was 18 and a half. Like I only, we only were married about a year and so a few you, months. So you got married when you were 17? Yeah. And divorced when you were 18? Yes. And then when's the next marriage? So then I was a bit heartbroken because that was my first love and I didn't want to get married again. And I was like completely off about it. And I actually wanted to leave the entire city. Like every place in that city used to remind me of my ex-wife. Yeah. So I said, you know, I want to move to Dubai. So I left to Dubai. I came to Dubai in 2010. And a few years later, my parents made arranged marriage. Um, they met a famous businessman in Dubai. And they're like, oh, he has a daughter. And like, they kind of connected us together. It wasn't someone that I met before. And we got married. And, and that how, was only two months. How? Oh. And it was the most silly thing ever. So basically, I traveled. I went to, uh, to France. And my wife, my ex-wife, she said that her parents were telling me, go, like, we'll send our daughter with you. I'm like, no, I'm going in business, you know? Like, yeah. I have work to do. So when I went there, I had Snapchat. <laughs> and uh, she wasn't on my Snapchat, my, okay. my ex-wife. And I took a picture of me and one of my ex-employees. Okay. Okay, we met in France. And when she saw the picture, when she saw the picture in Snapchat, because she had a fake account she was following me from. Yeah. She saw the picture, she thought that that was my ex-wife. She thought that I went to go see her. This is a two month marriage. A two month. And she went to her father and she told her father like, oh, look, Ibrahim, he went to his back to his ex-wife and blah, blah, blah. So took all of her stuff, left the house. And when I came back and I found the house empty, none of her stuff is there. I didn't do nothing about it. I'm like, okay, if you leave, you leave, it's done. So they were kind of shocked that they got that response from me. They uh, probably assumed that- You'll go crazy. I'll go crazy and I'll like, okay, I'll do whatever you want. Because when I, when I would listen to previous stories that happened within that family, with their own sisters and I realized that they want to control the man oh. and for me I can't be controlled I can't be controlled in the instance of that my life has to be governed yeah. by a woman where do I come what do I do no I'm the man I take care of the house now you said you got arranged marriage so you never met the girl before no, no I mean arranged marriage means that I didn't it wasn't a love marriage it wasn't someone like, that I fell in love with and married it was someone that my parents and my friends bring her to me. But why, like, why did you let that happen if you didn't love her? I was like, you know what? I was like, I got divorced. I'm like, maybe I'm not, I don't know how to do things. Maybe I'm choosing the wrong one. I said, let them choose one for me. Yeah. That was the honest. Like, so that, that's your second marriage. Yeah. And now your third marriage. Third marriage, I married my friend. And is this the current marriage? Current marriage. So right. basically I had a friend for two years and she was joking one day and she was like, you know what? If you don't get married in two years and I don't get married in two years, we're gonna marry each other. So I'm like, I thought she was jo- like, really, she's just joking. And then we thought about it and we're like, wait, like we actually compatible. Like, you know, we, I don't get tired from her. Like we joke, we have fun. Like she's the most, she's my number one fan when it comes to my jokes and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, you know, this is someone that I can see, I can live the rest of my life with. So you married like your best friend? Married a close friend, yeah. So it's kind of like funny, you see this on Instagram always, you know, like you end up marrying your closest friend, you know? But the thing is, is like, you know what attracted me about my wife is that when you work in a instance of so much social media and you see all these influencers and you see all these people, and then you see someone who's completely away from this lifestyle, who doesn't even like social media, who's not on, doesn't take photos, who doesn't go on the public eye, you're like, wait, this looks like something special. Yeah. Like you find something rare and you're like, okay, this is what I like because it's different. Does your wife have social media? She does, but you don't. We wouldn't. You would never know it's her because she doesn't post her photos. She doesn't really have her name on there. Now, actually, this is something a lot of people talk about because yeah. you got married and you're a star on a big reality TV show. Yeah. But you hid your wife. Yeah. Why? 
because my life is not for sale. So whatever I want to show the world, that's for them to see. Yeah. So many celebrities around the world have private lives and don't show it because do you know of any public marriage that was successful? Jay-Z, Beyonce. Ah, I got uh, you with that one. <laughs> yeah, but like one in how many? Yeah. The majority of them, they come into a failure. Why? Because people come in between them, yeah. you know? And people, when, when they see you love someone, or they see you in love with someone, they envy that love. And they want it. And I believe in, I'm, I'm a true believer of evil eye, you know? And for me, even like, I don't, I don't even like to show affection yeah. that I have towards my wife in public eye. You know, I believe this is something should be private, but everyone has their own, now, uh, has their own idea about this. Do you think you're hiding your wife because you're scared it'll ruin the relationship? No, first of all, I'm not hiding her. She doesn't want to be on, the, on, oh, yeah. on, on there. So that's, that's clear. However, I support it. So if she, tomorrow she said she wanted to be in the public eye, I would say no problem. Yeah. But I support it because I believe what sh- her idea is right. We have an agreement on this. Yeah. That this is the right way to do. Okay. But if she turns around and says, hey, I want to be on Instagram. Yeah, it's her own. It's, I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> would you give her a shout out? <laughs> I cannot. Yeah. I'll probably give her a shout out once. Um, <laughs> but yeah. But she's already, she's getting like thousands of requests. People, like someone leaked one of her, uh, one, of, one of the videos from the wedding and they, they, uh, they're trying their best to get, and like, they, what are they sending her? Stupid messages like, you know, uh, why aren't you with Ibrahim? Or like, where's, like, random things. Like, you know, even for me, like, when I take a picture of my mom, they're like, oh, where's your wife? I'm like, my mom is in the public eye, okay, but my wife doesn't want to be. Like, what you guys don't understand about okay. that? Okay, if your wife told you, or actually, not if your wife told you. Okay, here's a question. If you had to pick between your mom or your wife, who are you picking? Obviously, my mom. Damn. Obviously. Oh yeah, I mean that's the right answer. Too. Actually, if you if it really comes down to it, I mean that's the first thing a man would think is like his mom, his mom. Yeah, he's, he's his mom. But obviously, like I've said this before, if I ever if I ever had to choose, whoever made me choose, I won't choose them. So if my mom comes to me and makes me choose, you I won't choose, choose the wife. Yeah. So if you put me in that spot, because a, a man loving his mother is a different love than a man loving his wife. Yeah, it's, it's, it's two different things. You can't combine them. And yeah. there's no one's better than the other one. No one's more important. One is based on birth and the other one's based on choice. Yeah. Now, is there any, any rules you have for your wife? Just, um, I, don't, I don't like her to travel alone. Okay. Because I, I, I'm afraid for her. Like, I, <laughs> I want her to be always in good hands. Kidnapped. <laughs> no, like, you know, it, also religiously in my family, yeah. uh, we don't like women to travel alone. They should be with a man to take care of them, to make sure that they're okay. Okay. So, you know, if, for example, she, she wants to travel and I tell her no, she's going to be like, okay, well, then you have to take me. Then I'm like, I have to take her. You know, and the oh, people yeah. forget this. People are like, oh, like, oh, well, Muslim men are so dominant over their wives or whatever. No. When we do this, when we say these things, it's to protect them. Yeah. I, we are responsible for them. We are responsible for their well being. We're responsible for their safety. Yeah. How I'm going to, if, if I allow my wife to go by herself, and something happens to her, it's going to take me two, three days to get to her, or a day, or whatever, however far she is. Yeah. It's not like she's here, like I can say, okay, go to the mall. I can come in five minutes. Yeah. It's different. Now, what do you say? Because obviously you were mentioning this. What do you think your wife's role is in the relationship? My wife's role. Um, or like, what do you think? <clears throat> my wife, first of all, she doesn't take care of the house, she's not a housewife. She has her own job. Okay. Um, I never, f- she doesn't cook. So she told me from the beginning, I don't know how to cook. So I'm like, okay, uh, half talabat. I order them all the time. I know how to order talabats, no issue. Yeah. So we don't have an issue with that. Um, she, my wife is a person that is there for me when I need her. Like, I can't tell all my secrets to, to my friends. Some yeah. things I can only tell my wife. My wife knows who owes me money. Uh, people, a lot of people don't know who owes me money. I tell her in case I die, then she can collect it. <laughs> she can go collect you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, My wife... Uh, protects my image you know she she makes sure that if anyone ever says anything about me she's there to defend me and I'm there to defend her also yeah um, that's when you love someone and you care about someone and you don't want anyone to talk bad about someone um, yeah so mostly she's there for for being my my back and what 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 do you think a man's role is in the relationship a man's role is to protect his wife yeah. to make sure she's always protected always has a bodyguard next to her not just a husband you know, a bodyguard, a bodyguard, someone, anyone comes, you punch him. No one comes close to my wife. You know, um, a husband should be caring, loving, yeah. understanding, yeah. um, needs to know when to be quiet, you yeah. know, uh, because you know, when you, I realize something, when you have an argument, if you yell and I yell, 
of she yells and I, and I yell and never come to a conclusion. So sometimes a man needs to say, you know what, this is enough and he needs to walk away. Damn, that's crazy. And by the way, I love, I love how you talk about relationships here. You know, people have this cliche about like, oh, Muslim men or just, just men in general, I think, I think nowadays. I think honestly, Mo, uh, stereotyping is one of the biggest problems and miscommunications in life. Yeah. When we sit there and we stereotype and we, we, for example, we see a single lady, she came in from Russia and she comes to Dubai. Oh, I know what she's doing in Dubai. That's not nice. Yeah. That's, that's really messed up because there is really amazing people from Russia coming in, doing amazing things for the cities, uh, architects, designers, everything. Why do we have to go through always through that negativity? I think, I think, look, it's, it's easier said than done, right? But like... <laughs> A lot of things do fall in. I mean, stereotypes are there just because I guess there's a lot of that thing happening, but right? But it's wrong because when you stereotype someone, you can lose a really good person. No, for sure. Because I, you've already passed judgment without even knowing them. But I think it's like kind of like, you know how they say don't judge someone? I think no one in the world cannot not judge someone. And I've heard this said before. It's just like try to judge less. Mo, you can judge someone, but you can treat them with respect yeah. and let your judgment be your personal thing. And... If it's wrong, then let them to prove you wrong. But don't go on what you've judged them or what you've stereotyped them and go speak about it. Yeah. Because that's wrong. Because then you're, if, the, if someone else didn't pass that judgment on them, why are you going telling them what you thought? Why don't you let that person think for their own head to think? That, that's when you're being corrupt. Yeah. And that's when you're being a hater and that's when you're being a troll. Is when you pass your stereotype on someone else. And talking about judgment, mm -hmm. you know, you get judged a lot. I've been getting judged since I was eight years old, <laughs> you know? Um, and this is something that a lot of people, a lot of children reach out to me, you yeah. know? And it hurts me because every school in Dubai has reached out to me saying that I've been bullied because I talk a little bit, my, my, my voice is softer than the other boys. Yeah. And kids call me gay and call me faggot and call me this. And the sad thing is that that kid who has a soft voice, yeah. his, vo his puberty hasn't hit yet. Yeah. So they didn't even give him a chance. Yeah. And because they've called him that, he's went on and he's believed that that's where he is, but he's not. Yeah. So that's why you cannot, go, like, you cannot go to someone and see because they're not dressed so nice and you say, oh, he's a thief or he's a, from a poor family or he's this or he's that. Yeah. Because they go, if they don't have a strong personality, if they don't have a good confidence, they're going to go on believing that and you're going to create something that it wasn't even meant to be there. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm just going to, this is going to be a straight question, you know, and this is obviously guys, because we're talking about the judging thing, I'm just going to ask one of the most popular, people like troll you every day, right? Yeah. People are always bullying, like actually judging yeah. you. And this is a question, everyone, you see it all the time. Are no. you? I mean, I mean, I mean, no, I know where you're going. No, well, I'm just gonna just for the sake of it. No, are you gay? No. <laughs> you see that? That's all I wanted. But, but you know the thing is, is that the reason why I never answer them yeah. online is because the reason why they want me to answer them, yeah, is because they want attention. Okay. Yeah. They want attention and they want clarification and they want to continue passing their judgment and they continue on to assume. But and the fact is, the majority of them are f who are the uh, from that community. But do you see why? I don't care, bro. Like, yeah. thing is, like honestly, yeah, I'm not gonna change the way I am for someone else just because I did something or I wore something that made them think something. Yeah. This is me. Yeah. And if you, if everyone knows, they always say like, oh, he's not even, he's not, he doesn't even care anymore. I really, I don't give a shit. Yeah. At the end of the day, these trolls and yeah. these followers don't make me who, who I am. Yeah. I make myself. Yeah. If I'm going to follow into their stereotype and their classification of what they believe a straight man is, then I'm not going to be me. Yeah. I'm me because this is who I am. This is how I speak. This is how I dress. This is how I talk. And I don't have to change anything for anyone as long as my father and my mother accept me and I do the right thing according to Allah. I don't care about anything else. By the way, I'm, I'm, I, I understand your point. But I also see a lot of comments. You know, the thing is, like you said, we shouldn't like judge. But a lot of people are like, was the marriage fake? Was, did he get married because he uh, was trying to hide the fact that he was... No, I think the thing is, is that because a lot of people think that Dubai Bling is scripted, they think it's fake. That's one thing. Second of all, because... No, not of, Dubai Bling. It was your marriage. But that's the thing. Because that's what they think. And plus, they think a lot of people, when they stereotype, the questions come. Yeah. Okay? 
By the way, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Like, no, no. When I saw like straight away you got married, no, I was that's like, the thing. you know something. So my wife, so my wife, she was like, do you want me to, you know, to be in public side? I was like, no, no, no. You don't have to be in the public side for them. I don't give a fly f about the public. Yeah. Okay. Why? As long as I am happy with the way I'm living my life, as long as my mom and my sister, yeah. my family is protected, I don't give a sh what anyone thinks. Question. Yeah. But why did you show you're getting married? It was a part of it was a part of my 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 storyline. But why, if you're gonna hide your wife, why show I your- I didn't, but that's the thing. So Mo, you live in the UAE. You yeah. understand that there is Emiratis who don't go out on camera. No, of course, yeah. yeah. But I'm saying why, so, like, why don't I, just hide the whole thing? Well, because I wanted to show the world that in this part of the world, we do have something called a woman's only wedding that men are not inside. Ah. We do have something called women who are low profile. Yeah. So it was a message, even my mom being on the show on Dubai Blink, there's a message that there is something called a revert. A revert is someone who's become Muslim, who was Christian and became Muslim. Yeah. This is something I said, okay, well, if, if this is something to show, this is what we're gonna show. Yeah. It wasn't that, oh, I showed just that, and then I, no, but it was a part of like, how can I, like during that time I was filming, like yeah. when I was getting married, I was filming. Yeah. There's no way I can get away with getting out of the scenes unless I gave them something. So yeah. I said, okay, let's look at a positive side. Let's do this. And people can see what an Arabic wedding is, what an Emirati wedding is. And do you, do you think do you think this is going to be your last marriage? I hope so. They said three times the charm. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, talking, moving on. Dubai bling. Yeah. Is Dubai bling fake? So. No. Come on. It's not. It's real. Come on. The only thing fake is your mom's ass. <laughs> 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. Well, listen, listen. How about this? Okay. Is okay. Dubai bling, of course. There's yeah. a lot of real. Is there? Jeez, oh, man. Is there? Okay, like, okay, you're real. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we were talking about this the other day, but I can't. I can't. But is there fake things on the show? And not to say it's from the show, from the people. Is there? Okay. Is there fake people on the show? Honestly, I mean, come on. Some of those people there's, are. There's a, there, honestly, there's a few scenes that happen on the show that I wasn't a part of. Okay. Okay. And, okay. But I'm okay. not gonna. I'm not gonna say which scenes, but there's some scenes, especially in season two, and I wasn't a part of it because I didn't know what was even happening. I wasn't even nowhere near it. Yeah. I was somewhere else. Yeah. And I was like that. It would have been better if that wasn't on because it really did seem See. it was fake. But okay, here's it. Okay, leave the is show. It? I don't know because I wasn't there. The show is real, but. Yeah. Some of the people on the show are faking it, and not not to, even the show doesn't know. But well, come on, honestly, when the when someone when the camera is on, people become extra. Yeah, you know. And it honestly annoys me because for me, I don't even I don't even imagine the cameras there. Like yeah. for me, you're you. <laughs> yeah, the cam like even it's like you know like sometimes like my like people are like Ibrahim like what did you just say? Yeah. I'm like, I don't care. This yeah. is who I am. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, I can say really controversial shit will get me in big trouble. Who do you hate the most on the show? Hate is a big word. Just say I can it. say dislike. Who do you, you hate? Like, who would you just punch in the face? Season one or season two? Now, new. This season two. Honestly, I'm good with everyone right now. No. I swear. No. I'm cool with everyone, really. I You're am. playing a political walla, side. Walla. Right? No, no, no. Who do you am. dislike? In season one, I really I had an issue with Zayn. I didn't like her. Now, season two, you fought now all we're of cool. them. Me and her were cool. No, just Zena. Well, Zena and Zena was soft over too. That's the only people I had an issue with. I haven't had, I haven't had an issue with anyone else. Anyone yeah. else. Now, obviously, being on Dubai Bling, you know, it's a show about wealth. How rich are you? So we have this thing. Um, when the show first came out, yeah. there was these Arabian businesses going around trying to figure out how rich everyone was. Yeah. And according to one of their calculations they said my net worth is about 50 million dollars 50 million dollars yeah and what a lot of people don't understand is what net worth is is basically what your assets are what you yeah. own okay um i have very strong property intellectual rights so forever rose forever rose cafe these are strong uh ip rights means that this company we've made a collaboration with disney we made a collaboration with mgm we're doing wow. now bare bricks you know oh, no way. so we have so much collaborations that we're doing and the name of itself is, has a very very high value you yeah. know without calculating the actual physical assets yeah 
um, I never, I never ever wanted a number to define who I am as a person. I never wanted to be tied to a number. I never yeah. wanted to say I have this much. Yeah. Because I always believed, I, I honestly and truly, Mo, if you get to know me more, I hate money. I hate money because I see wars. I see people die because of money. Yeah. I see families losing each other from money. I see people who love each other break up because of money. You know, so the idea of money bothers the hell out of me. Even people know when I go somewhere, I'm always paying because I don't want you to say, "Oh, you paid 100 dirhams, I paid 100 dirhams." It just annoys me. If I'd give you a billion dollars right now, would you take it? Of course, I'll take it. <laughs> Probably do something good with it. You know. <laughs> so why do you hate money? I I I, I, I want to take something I no, hate. No, the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, well, I understand what you're trying you know what to I mean? say, but like, but the thing I mean, is, that, yeah. I mean, when I mean, when I say, you hate what people do with I money. hate, I hate the way people put Act money. For money. Yes, you know yeah. what I mean. I, money is for me. It's like a water. You have to drink it to continue your day. Yeah, you need money for buying. It's a commodity. It's a. It's it's a, it's an object. Yeah, just a transaction. People, with. yeah, people take it to another level. They, yeah. they, what they do for it is sickening, you know? Yeah. And I know no matter how much money I have, it's not gonna change the level of happiness. People think, people really do think, and these are broke people who think this, that when I get like that dream car that I have, I'm gonna be happy. Yeah. You're gonna be happy for two, three days. Yeah. You're not gonna wanna stop driving it. But then it's become a norm. When it becomes a norm, you're gonna want more. Yeah. And, the, and you get more. But the only thing that is self-satisfactory is having someone next to you who loves you for who you are, not what you have. Yeah. That's the only comfort in the world that you are gonna be feel comfortable, you're gonna feel relaxed. I guarantee you, you speak to the richest people, if they're honest, yeah. they will tell you the truth is money doesn't buy happiness. Money can bring some happiness, but it's not yeah. the ultimate happiness. So actually that was one of my questions. Do you think money makes you happy? It doesn't. Bro, I was broke when I was, a, not a teenager, but when I was like a 14, yeah. you know? Not broke, but I mean, I, I wasn't rich. Yeah. And I swear to God, I used to make the best of that, that, that $10 I had or $20. I, I would go and, and, you know, buy ice cream or like, you know, go out with the family and just enjoy it. Yeah. What joy I had then and what joy I have now that I can buy anything I want is no different. Um, if I give you a button right now. A what? A button. A button, okay. Yeah, if I give you a button. Yeah. And each time you clicked it, you'd get a million dollars. Mm but it takes away one year from your life. I wouldn't click it once. What? I wouldn't click it once. You wouldn't? I wouldn't. I Just swear to God, I wouldn't. I would not. Okay. Life is too precious to be sold. Here's another question. <laughs> you hate my question. What is no. this? Okay. Someone would give you $10 billion. Okay. But you had to cheat on your wife once. Is cheating considered marrying a second wife? <laughs> Without her knowing. <laughs> 10 billion? 10 billion. Mm. I would probably, oh, without her knowing, okay. I was probably gonna negotiate with her, like, listen, cheer. can I go no, out? No, you have to cheat. I'm like, can, would you sell me? I was split I mean, it with you. <laughs> you no, can't split it? No, I don't care. Yo, come on, 10 billion. Bro, I, you think, I swear, it's, it, you know it's a, it's a big number, no. and I know how hard you have to work to make that money, but I mean, look. I have enough money for me to be happy. And I don't need. Ibrahim, you took a long pause for that ten billion. <laughs> no, because I was thinking, I was trying to think smart. No, I mean, like, you, you know, you can explain to her later, but you just have to, you know. Nah, uh, I wouldn't break her heart. Listen, I she's think worth more than ten. The billion. wife I marry, I think she would understand why. No, no, mine wouldn't. Mine wouldn't. Mine. If you asked her the same question, she wouldn't sell me either. Like we, she, she, ten billion. she, billion, she loves me and I love her. Billion. <laughs> Uh, anyways, what's your biggest regret? <laughs> Shaitan. Uh, what's your biggest regret in life? I guess uh, selling my childhood. You sold your childhood? How, how would you sell your childhood? I started work when I was 14. It's kind of young. So when my friends were going out to the cinema and going, having fun, I was sitting there saving money for my company. And a lot of people don't understand this. Like when I joke and I bark and I do crazy things yeah. and I'm like, I act like a fool, I act crazy. Yeah. It's because I haven't felt that I've actually grown up yet. Yeah. But, I'm, but it's crazy because when I want to be an adult, like when I want to be a serious businessman, I f smash it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But majority of the time, I'm this teenager that hasn't got old because I haven't enjoyed my time as a teenager. Do you think you are the way you are because of your upbringing? Yeah. And also one more thing. I, t I think you're from such a big family. Do you think maybe you're so outgoing and loud maybe because from a childhood you wanted to stand out? No, um, I believe. You know what I'm trying to say, right? No. Like maybe because you were like 
part of eight kids and you just didn't get attention. I'm just, I, I know theoretically saying. No, I've always gotten attention. I think yeah. I am the way I am because my mom spoiled me. Okay. Um, I'm the youngest boy. No one could come close to me. My pup, my brothers used to call my mom. They used to call call my mom public defender. So even when I was wrong, she would defend me. She would defend you. So whenever like I get in trouble in school, my dad was like, "Oh, it's your fault. You kept protecting him." She would always save me from my dad like beating me or hitting me. Oh, okay. And when he would catch me, he would actually hit me harder because he knows that my mom will protect me. You know, so he won't get to hit me as much as he uh, wanted to. Um, so wait, your your father was abusive. Yeah. Okay, but I don't blame him for it. Um, my dad's a good dad, and it was just the way he I was think, brought up. I think it's the way it's just the way he's brought up. Would I hit my kids? No, but this is the way my dad was brought up, and this is their mentality. Yeah. And I know he did it out of love. He didn't do it out of like sickness of like he wanted to see me in pain. Yeah, I know he loved me so much and wanted me to be better than him. And he always gave us everything he had. Like my dad made sure that we had the best cars, and he wouldn't even buy himself a car. He'd make sure we all had the best cars. Um, I want to say this right now. Mm. Right now, are you happy? Alhamdulillah. Honestly, I'm very happy. Genuinely. Genuinely happy. And the only thing that hurts me is seeing what's happening in the world. Okay. Um, I'm not able to sleep sometimes seeing news before I sleep. It, it, I have nightmares of it. So that's the only thing that bothers me at the current moment. Do you think you're a good person? Alhamdulillah. Oh, that's I don't. That's a long beep. Someone's mad outside. Yeah, someone's you, pissed off. <laughs> do you think you're a good person? I think I'm a, I'm a good person and I think I can be a better person. And now, there's always room for improvement. You're political, bro. Come on, man. Just, huh? You're just very smart answering my questions. No, I'm honest. I think I'm, I'm a decent person. I'm, I wouldn't say good. I'm a good person. <laughs> if you get to know me and you ask, you know what? It's very simple. If you want to know a good businessman, a good boss, ask his employees what they think of him. If they say something bad. No, <laughs> no, no. Go and ask them on yeah, a day no, that they don't way, know I've you. I've seen them around you. They yeah. really like you. I treat them like my family. Now, if you were, if you were to die tomorrow, what would you do in your last 24 hours? Honestly. I'll just spend it with my mom, my dad, and my wife, my family, in between them. You wouldn't like go around and kill people like shit. twenty four hours. You have to pay for it afterwards. <laughs> I'm not joking. If anything, guys. I'll go to Umrah. I'll be praying there just Yo, so I don't I, go to hell. People are gonna take this out of context. Like twenty four hours. You know? Do you, do you ever get these intrusive thoughts? Like, come on. You never had thought like, oh, twenty twenty four hours. It just go like cause chaos around the world. I wouldn't. Damn. You're, you're, I mean, good guy, Ibrahim. Okay. Now this is a little game we're playing. All right. Okay. And actually, by the way. Because obviously, I think a lot of these questions, I mean, I hope your wife doesn't watch this podcast. Like, you know, I'm trying to, I'm really She's putting- the first one that's going to watch it. So- I'm sorry to Ibrahim's wife. And, and anything that makes her upset makes me upset. So I'll come after you. So obviously, you're one of your best friends. Yeah. Danya is a girl. Yeah. How's your wife feel about that? She loves her. Okay. But to be honest, yeah, I get it. I mean, I understand. But you know how family, bro. You know yeah. Danya. You've been knowing her for a while. Anyways. Yeah, she's not like that. Yeah, she's not like that because she's also yeah. married. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. I want you to rate the female cast on Dubai Bling. Okay. And this is purely on looks. Yeah, sure. Okay. So one to 10, each okay. one of them, you know. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. This is going to put you in trouble. So first of all, we have Lojane. Lojane Amran or Adada? Omran. 10 out of 10. <sighs> Beauty and brains. <laughs> Shit. That's a home run right here. <laughs> okay. The other Lojane. LG, uh, eight and a half. Eight and a half. All right. Farhan. Uh, eight. Okay. Zayna. Six. <laughs> um, Safa. Five. Yeah. Brianna. Four. Oh my God. <laughs> Mona. <laughs> ten out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> you were just with Mona before Brain, this. Brains and and uh, beauty. Um, and finally, Home run. Uh, finally, Danya. Danya, of course, ten out of ten. I mean, come on, now you're, this is like, of course, I'm not saying like, but I'm saying like one to ten purely looks, you know? Yeah, purely looks. Oh well, looks, yeah. Oh, I I was going for the brains as well. Um, yeah, okay, you. Yeah, looks. Her. The top, top, top for looks wise, like that I find as a beautiful yeah. woman at her age is uh, is Lujan Amran. Okay. I think she's stunning, honestly. And okay. the way she carries herself, how elegant she is. Yeah. Honestly, she's up there. By the way, yeah. who is the richest on the show? I think Mona. Oh, yeah. No, okay. Apart from Mona, because Mona is like, that's the big boss right there. Me. You think you are? I know I am. Second richest in the whole show. Yeah. Well, we can say season one, me. What about season two? Someone's going up Mona, there? Mona's in season okay, two. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What about, uh, is, is it Fahad, the one that people say is quite rich? <sighs> No comment. 
No, but like you have to think about it. Like, let me know. No, no comment. I for me for me to see wealth, I need to see uh, what you own. You know what do you own? All my companies. Like it's it's all there. Like let, the numbers. Let, no, the, number, let, the numbers. The numbers are actually with the UAE. Like we pay taxes, so let's let's it's talk, nothing we can hide. Let's talk yeah. about money. Yeah. How much money do you have? I honestly don't know. No, I just, sw- Mo, I swear to God, I will swear on the Quran. Yeah. I don't know what I, I have I in believe, my bank account. I, I believe I don't you don't know. what know. I have. Okay, in your top... Like, I have 17 bank accounts. 17, 17 bank accounts. Each company has its own bank account. What comes in there, it comes on a daily basis. These are cash businesses. Yeah. You have to understand that. Okay. I have a Swiss bank. I have a US bank account. Like, there is, there's so many bank accounts. I haven't... Is, I have never sat down and kept... I'll tell you why. And I know, like, you're thinking it... No, no, I, be, I believe you. I don't, I don't, I never wanted a money, an amount of money to define who I am. I didn't want to sit there and count it. I thought I would jinx myself like, oh, oh, I have this much money. Send that. No, I didn't want to say, oh, I'm doing well. I'm not doing well. My, uh, my accountants, they tell us how we're doing. Okay. They say we've increased sales from last year, 2%, 3%. That's all you need to know. Okay. Is your net worth more than $1 million? Obviously. Is your net worth more than 10 million? Obviously. More it's above 50. Your net worth is over 50 million. It's above 50 million dollars. Wow. This was back, this was, this, they told, they had this estimate in 2000 2013. That, that's a lot of money. That's 10 years ago. 50 million. Sir. Is your net worth I worked hard for it. Like you don't understand. Yeah. I busted my ass. I sold my childhood. Is your net worth over 100 million? A hundred. Depends on who's evaluating it. Okay, so that's the range <laughs> we're going for. Depends on who's evaluating it. Damn. Yeah. So, I mean, what's your, so what's your dream purchase? Like if you had all the money in the world, what would you buy? I don't know. Like I'm not a crazy, I'm not a crazy buyer of things. I get so many gifts. I don't need, I don't know if I need to buy anything. Like, you know how many freaking wallets and bags I have in my things I haven't even opened yet, you know? Yeah. It's just like materialistic things doesn't bother, like doesn't intrigue me. Like I bought my first watch when I came to Dubai and I was like, even any watch that I have, like I, I don't even make the, I don't even fix the time of it because I look at my phone for the time. Yeah. So I just wear a watch just because people say, oh, watch looks nice on someone or they identify someone, even a car. Yeah. When I first came to Dubai, I was like, I bring my car from America. I literally shipped it out of Mercedes. Yeah. Is and that an old one or no? Right? No, no, no. That one's, <laughs> no, no, that one's shipped from America, but it wasn't that one. Yeah. But I, I, I shipped, it was a Mercedes CLS and uh, it's the car I had there. So yeah. I just shipped it here. And then I was like seeing people here, like they have to have nice cars and they have to have these numbers. And I was yeah. like, even the phone number, my phone number that I have, I only have one phone number. I don't have any other number. Yeah. And that phone number, like it's the shittiest number. And people are like, why don't you have the better phone number? I can easily buy a a good phone Continuous number. digit like, number. Okay, I mean, you know how everyone has vision boards and they, I want to buy a Bugatti. Like, you don't have any Honestly, one thing. Honestly, anything I really want to buy is my own island. You want to buy an island? Yeah. That would be cool. That would be cool. What's your What's your plans for 2024? Like, would you like... I want to I wanna, I wanna level up. I've been doing 20 years of business. Yeah. Um, I want to go into bigger things like oil and gas, our um, weapons, our... Um, I want to close bigger deals. So yeah. Whenever I go into any meeting, I can close the deal. So i rather do that, be this person who closes these deals. And I want to also open a creative agency where I can help people open businesses as well. I think so I want to, yeah, I want kids to come to me or like young, young teenagers or young graduates from university to come to me and say, listen, we've learned how to do this. Can you show us how it's done? Yeah. So what do you have to, if you, ha- if you want to open a brand, I'm going to tell them you have to go to trade shows and I'll give them the trade shows where to go. I'll help them with the logo because a lot of people make mistakes from these types. They make mistakes about logo. They make also a mistake by not registering a trademark. I, I want to say one thing. Mm. You even opened up a, a rest, a cafe with your best friend. Yeah. How is that? Don't you think it's, I mean, people say never open a business with your friend. I, I did it to prove to the world that you can open a, a business with your friend. And it can be successful. It have, and by the way, is that business 50 50? It's 50 50. Okay. And anyway. it's doing really well, to now, be honest. Now, last, last, last thing I wanted to touch base on, you know, mm. obviously, I'm just going because there was one thing I want to talk about, but I, I mean, I'm just going to skip through it, guys. We're just going to skip through. What's your fi- like, what's your message to the world about Ibrahim? I, mean, I really want to talk about I I know we're not supposed to, you know, mm. but the judgment thing. Here's the thing you know how you said, if you dress a certain way. Mm. Like don't call someone a thief because they dress up badly. Mm. And I get it, like you just want to dress up like. But you know, don't you think if someone doesn't want to be judged, they should, I mean, do you want to be judged? <laughs> like, or it's just- I, do, I really don't care. You don't care? I actually enjoy it. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Damn. You know what's crazy? Yeah. Is that the way I look at it is, why is the world so obsessed with my sexuality? Yeah. Am I that 
desirable that everyone has to be worried about my sexuality, what it is. You are good looking. Yeah, I know I am. But the thing <laughs> is, is that why is it why is it so important? Like, why is it the talk? Why is it always in the messages? Why is it like? What does it matter? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. Right? I mean, there's so many things about me that people can learn from. Why are some of those people only concerned about that? Yeah. This is who I am. This they is how. They can learn about your business. They can exactly. learn about the hard they work. Can, exactly. Yeah. And and the thing is, is that I'll, even my fans, they get annoyed by it. Yeah. You can see I don't answer. It's my fans who answer. Yeah. You know? But um, it's a part of life. This is what they're going to do. I'm not going to do anything different than yeah. what I've already been doing because this is who I am. Okay. Final question. Advice yeah. to me mm. and other people around the world mm. on how to live their life. <laughs> You have advice for me because you yeah. kind of know me. What's your yeah. advice on me? I always, so, I think I could improve in a lot of ways. So as yeah. you seeing me as a person, what would you judge I think, me? I think that for the past years, like you, it's time that Mo grows up. Uh-huh. It's time that Mo is no longer this teenager. Mo, we need Mo to be a man, yeah. not a, a teenager or a kid. Yeah. I look at you sometimes and you're a smart kid. I mean, you're a smart man. Yeah. Okay? You're, you're a good person. I just, I think that you are you do certain things for your audience who yeah. are a lot of the y- y- younger gen- gen- generation gen- yeah. but i think people who've been following you for so long has became adults and i think that you need to also grow up be with on them. their grow up with them because they need you also they you are a nostalgic thing to them yeah you they used to follow you when they were younger and i think that if you elevate yourself and people can see you developing your life into the adult yeah. you don't, you're not going to be 50 years old and still doing the same thing yeah. you know what I mean and by the way, I think so. that's a, something a lot of not just me a lot of people like you need to find the balance of right yeah like, there's a balance how do I do this without you know and I think when you're doing the same thing for a very long time you don't become good at it yeah you know it's become like you kind of see things from within your 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 capsule you need to kind of get out of the capsule and do something out of the ordinary yeah. you know and level up you know what I mean and one final thing and I know I said that was the final question yeah. um how do you think social media affects relationships? Because look, even you, you've been in three relationships, you know? So do you, do you think love exists nowadays? I feel like everything is becoming temporary. Like, I don't know, in this life, like, I, know, I say this to my friends, it's so stupid. It's like nowadays, people went from long form content to short form. Yeah. And now they're going from long marriages to short marriages. Yeah. You know? It's sad because, you know, when you go on social media, you see these different things and you see other people living a certain way and you want that you know what's always important is that you don't look what other people have you see what you have and you yeah. appreciate it a lot of people they get sick by going out and seeing oh well this person has a better car than me don't worry about other people worry about yourself yeah don't worry about what other someone else's wife looks like don't worry about what your someone else does with his wife yeah. worry about yourself be content and always look about what people have less than you yeah always under, look at the person who's less and say i'm better off than them alhamdulillah i'm yeah. content with that so stop looking at people because you there's always going to be someone better than you there's always going to be someone smarter than you beautiful than you handsomer than you yeah. so don't worry about others worry about yourself and this is why people are having these issues because friends are comparing their their marriage with their friend's marriage and this yeah. is two different people you can't compare this yeah. that's why i say compare apple to apple not apple to orange <laughs> who's the orange <laughs> Who's that? All right, anyways, Ibrahim, thank you so much. Honestly, thank it's probably know. been one of the funnest podcasts I've done. I love you. I hope you don't hate me. I don't. Why would I Subscribe. hate you? Subscribe. And by the way, guys, go check out Ibrahim on all of his platforms. Yes, the Blooming Man Instagram, the Blooming Man Snapchat, the Blooming Man TikTok. Why is it called them. Blooming Man? Just name so, Ibrahim. So the Blooming Man came from the flower business because that's when I really got famous from that business. Yeah. So I'm always blooming means that I'm always becoming better, a better version of myself. So yeah. that's why I'm blooming and like the flower blooms. And what's one secret no one knows? I know how to bark like a dog. Oh my God. Give it. Just, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys. Everyone ran That's off the podcast. <laughs>